Hey guys, in this video, we're going to be taking a look at a 3D printer made by a company called Mingda, which is called the Magician X. So yeah, I'm pretty excited to see what this printer is all about. So in this video, we're going to unbox it, set it up and do some prints. Hope you enjoy the video. Let's get started. Alright, so this is the box that the Magician X comes in. It's not very large. We have a picture here of what the printer looks like. And this yellow tape you see on the bottom is actually an indication of it being open at customs. So just ignore that. And they did open it from the bottom, which is kind of interesting. On the side here, we can see the dimensions in millimeters, 530 by 465 by 250. So yeah, not a very big box. And on the shipping label, it says eight kilograms, which is about 16, 17 pounds. So let's go ahead and open it up. On the top here, we can see we got styrofoam. That's an unusual choice. Usually we get the soft foam. Let's see how this thing's packed. All right, so it is upside down and this makes sense because if it was opened during inspection, I guess they put it back upside down. So I guess we can go ahead and just flip it around and then just pull the box up. All right, so that looks much better. So we do have a top portion here that comes up. So yeah, it is all styrofoam and we can see how it's packed, which appears to be very well. I wish let you guys see a little better. All right, so we got an SD card. It's unmarked and it is a full size, so that's nice. Looks like our manual. Very nice. I like to see companies do a good job and it's actually colored also and presenting the manual. So yeah, it looks like it's a pretty simple installation here, guys, of a few pieces. And then we got just operational guide here. It tells you how to use the printer. Very cool. So it looks like here we have a bag of tools, Allen wrenches and an open-ended wrench, eight and 10 millimeter. More pieces, looks like a cover to something. A small little coil of test filament in gray, looks like PLA. We get an extra 0.4 nozzle and a piece of PTFE tubing. And this looks like the hardware that we need to put the printer together, which is not very many bolts. So yeah, this should be quite simple, guys. We get a pretty long power cord which looks to be pretty nice quality and then this pool holder which is a one piece injected molded plastic that looks like it clips into somewhere and the main piece here we got the gantry so let's go ahead and try to pull it out here and check this thing out it's quite unique so we do have dual z-axis motors with rods very large rail here on the x-axis these end brackets are plastic seem to be pretty heavy duty though and quite important and very nice to see is the dual z-axis rods here are tethered on the top with a belt so yeah that's great flipping it around we can see we got smooth faces on the front that's nice and i guess the most interesting part about this printer here is the hot end assembly which is also a direct drive extruder and not only that it's also a dual gear drive extruder. So yeah, very cool. So very nice clean layout here. Very interesting indeed. So yeah, we're gonna take a closer look at all the details here. But another thing to mention here is the top. This is an injection molded plastic piece here with a handle. And it does look like this is where our spool holder will clip on. So yeah, pretty cool. So at the bottom layer here, we can see we have the base of the printer and it's nestled in the styrofoam. And this thing is just a pretty unique design overall. The whole base is actually made out of plastic. You guys can maybe see it. But yeah, pretty unique for sure. And we've got a pretty interesting layout here on this printer and how it's all built. So yeah, we're gonna take a closer look at everything, but let's get it out of the way for now. And you guys can see that is everything. So I think the first thing I wanna do, flip this thing around upside down, 
and see if we can open the back here so we can see what's on the inside of this thing. There's a seal here that does say warranty is void if it's broken, but I'm not sure if that's legally even binding here in the US. So, but in any case, we're gonna open it up to see what's inside. So there are some Phillips bolts all the way around looks like, and they didn't include a Phillips screwdriver probably on purpose for that reason. But yeah, while we're under here, it does have pretty nice little, I guess they're kind of like foamy pads. I thought they were rubber, but they are foam. So yeah, this should suppress the noise pretty well. And now we break the seal and we're going to open this up so you guys don't have to. All right, let's see. It should pop up, baby. Well, maybe not. I wonder if there's some bolts underneath these pads. And sure enough, there is. So yeah, you definitely don't want to open this up unless you absolutely have to. So... Yeah, there we go. So yeah, I'm gonna have to pull these pads off, unfortunately. And they are just stick on, so yeah, they might not stick so well when I put them back in, but shouldn't be a problem. So as I was peeling them off, technically you don't have to completely peel them off. You can just kind of raise the side where the bolt is, and, you know, not rip off the whole foot. Yeah, and this corner here didn't even have to be removed, so. In any case, we're close to getting this bottom off. Forgot one bolt here. All right. And that's our bottom there. So it's completely plastic and you guys can see there's venting here. I don't want to flip it around because I got little bolts all in there still. Set it to the side. And this is what we see inside. So there's actually a frame here, but not across. So yeah, it does depend on the plastic molded part itself to be the structure, which I guess is fine because it does feel pretty sturdy in the way it's built. All right, so let's take a closer look here. So the power supply is 24 volt, 15 amp. And it looks pretty generic, but that's, you know, expected here. So all the wires seem to be crimped well and routed nicely. We got the power input here. It is fused with an on and off switch. And yeah, this is pretty interesting layout here. And this main cable that goes out here to the side, it does come from the board, which does have an ARM processor. And I guess that's the model number there for it. You guys can see that. Full size SD card, very cool. Some fuses there, so yeah. But probably the most interesting part is the stepper motor drivers because they're very tiny there, you can see. And there's no heat sinks on them. So yeah, that's very interesting. And another part that's interesting is there's no fan that cools off the board at all. And there's no fan that I see with the chassis except for the power supply fan here. So yeah, out of that, we got a ribbon cable going to the touchscreen display board. Definitely quite a unique design and looks like, you know, maybe this is the future of more budget printers here so hopefully this was interesting to somebody and you know you don't have to take yours apart all right so i'm gonna put the lid back on we'll flip it around and we'll start the assembly all right so let's take a closer look here at the manual you guys can see we got all the parts laid out shows us everything that's included so here we have the assembly on step one so yeah it looks like we're just going to connect the upper portion of the printer to the base the bottom portion and there's only two bolts which are in this packet and they're the larger ones so let's grab our gantry and i don't know if you guys can see but there's like these little special pockets here that the gantry looks like sits in there's actually like a notch there that kind of slides into the side here and it does appear like we have two little bolts that go from the side too and one big one from the bottom but yeah in any case it should just sit right in there all right, well, that's pretty easy and it holds itself very well. So watch out for these little wires here. Okay, so we got two smaller bolts and those will go on the side here and the one larger one will go from the bottom. So let's go ahead and start the smaller ones. Go ahead and grab our tools. So we do get a pretty nice set of Allen wrenches and also this open it and wrench. So I'm just going to start these but not tighten them because we still have to start the bottom. So. And now we can put our bolt underneath. So we're just going to raise this. And maybe you guys can see there's that hole there. And start the bolt. All right, so I'm not going to tighten it yet. Just snug it a bit. We're going to go ahead and do the other side. We've got two little bolts. And then we've got the big one on the bottom. So we can go ahead and tighten this side up. All right. And now the side ones and snug them up, but be careful not to snug them too much because, you know, this is all plastic here. So once you start feeling some pretty good resistance, you know, you probably want to stop. Let's go to the other side. Go ahead and tighten the bottom first. And then we'll do these little guys. Again, guys, not too tight. And that's it. And we basically got the 
top portion here connected to the bottom portion so yeah that's pretty simple enough there so let's see what's next on the manual looks like we have the spool holder and it looks like the spool there just clips in literally so so according to the manual it looks like it goes on this side if you're looking at the front and yeah the spool holder is pretty simple it's all one piece and you guys can see it kind of like just slides in and clips on so here on the top there's a bracket and it should just slide right in and I think it goes this way so the spool part going to the front since you know our extruder is here on the front so yeah it's just gonna slide right on and clip there so yeah pretty simple and if you want to take it off there's a little tab there you pull on the back and it comes right off so yeah pretty cool and actually you could probably put it on either side you want technically doesn't really matter because you can you know feed it from here down or from here down so either way I guess whatever your preference is but just for the instruction sakes let's just go here so yeah simple as that the spool holder is on and so our next step is actually just plugging everything in looking at it here from the front on the side where the main cable comes out we can see at the end of it we got a few plugs here to plug in so we've got a main plug that'll plug in right here so this is a junction box and it looks like there's like a little cable holder here on the side so I think it kind of let's go ahead and plug it in first so that goes there and sure enough that's what that's for very cool I definitely like that so above this cable there's another plug which is where this red plug goes this is the in stop switch for the x-axis so we're going to plug that in and then we have the last one here which is the motor plug for the x-axis motor here on the bottom plug that in and that's it for this guy here so let's go ahead and flip to the back here we can see we got one of our z-axis motors and the plug coming out right beside it so we need to plug that in all right here on the bed we can see there's also a plug and that's where this guy plugs in and it just comes out of the base here and i like how they have it all very nicely constructed and strain relieved so yeah we're gonna plug that in there and then our last plug here is on the other z-axis motor and just like that so yeah that is everything guys it's actually quite simple to put this printer together now one thing we haven't done yet which is quite important is actually look at all of our rollers so we have some rollers on the bed we've got rollers on the x-axis here and we also have rollers here on the outside of the channels here on the z-axis moving up and down so on my printer here it looks like everything is pretty adjusted very well actually almost perfect i would say yeah which is quite impressive but i'm gonna go over it just really quick so just in case yours are not you know perfect and you have like wobbling in the bed or the hot end and you adjust your rollers it's actually quite simple and you're gonna need this open-ended wrench here so on the bed there's four rollers two on one side and then two on the other and they squeeze around this channel and maybe you guys can see so one side has adjustable eccentric nuts and the other side is just stationary so the one with the eccentric nuts what you're going to do is just grab one end and you're going to turn it and that's going to move the wheel closer or farther away from the frame piece and that's how you adjust them tighter or looser and the best way to tell is if you stick your hand under there and you can spin the wheel in one spot you should be able to turn it as it's sitting still and be able to kind of like do a little burnout so if your wheels are too tight and you can't spin them stationary like that then you know you have to loosen them but if they're too loose and the bed moves around then you have to tighten them so the idea here is to tighten them as little as possible so the bed doesn't move but they're as free as possible so you have a very smooth and nice motion on the rail yeah same thing for the hot end assembly here you got two wheels on the top and one on the bottom and the bottom one is the adjustable one which you can adjust to be tighter or looser so same thing here you want them to be as loose as possible so you guys can see i can roll them really easily just in one spot there so if you can't roll them like this you need to loosen it up but if it's too loose it's going to wobble so you guys can see i don't have a wobble and i have a very smooth motion and that's what you want so yeah surprisingly all of my rollers on this printer are adjusted pretty much perfectly so i'm not even going to touch them and same thing here around these channels everything's adjusted pretty well so these are not as critical but you still want them you know to be somewhat close and better looser than tighter because we do have dual z-axis rods here that you know have very consistent elevation between the two sides so yeah anyways hope that helps somebody out so for the next part let's take a closer look at the printer and all of the details so this is a medium format printer and you guys can see it's not very large but it's a good decent size 
And probably the coolest thing about it is the way it looks and that direct drive hot end assembly there all together it looks pretty interesting. So let's start here on the top. You guys can see the spool holder and this is where it clips on and you know, you can clip it here too. So either side, I guess. We do have a nice little handle here to carry the printer. This is all one piece plastic here that connects to the channels. We've got a little logo here up front. The channels are smooth on this side. Very nice, clean look. Flipping it around, this is what we see from the back here. And you guys can see the belt there on the gear on each side so I'm very pleased to see that they added this belt to this dual setup here because it's quite important to have it so going down from there we can see these brackets here are completely plastic all around so yeah I mean I guess it's fine it does seem to be pretty thick and durable in the design and it's the same on both sides there Going down, we can see we have couplers with the motors, and there are two of them. Now to raise this thing manually up and down, what you do is you just grab the belt here and turn it, and you can go up and down like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and raise it up just a little bit here. So right away, you guys probably can tell we have a really, really thick X-axis rail here. So yeah, this is definitely much larger than usual. That's kind of interesting. So this is what the back of the direct drive extruder here looks like, including the hot end assembly all together. Silicone heat sock there, and also our fan shroud, you guys can see, blows underneath. So All right, so coming down, we can see our bed, and it is the perforated kind, which basically when it heats up, it sticks the filament to it, and then when it cools, it should pop right off. So and you can see the build plate there is glass and then we have the aluminum heated bed which is not insulated not a big deal because it's not large but what's interesting is the frame underneath is actually plastic so it does seem to be pretty heavy duty but it is plastic which is really interesting i guess and another thing that's very interesting about this bed is that there's no adjustable knobs underneath at all so it's pretty much stationary as it comes and i'm guessing the hot end in there has something to level the bed so we'll see how that works so it looks like there's no manual leveling here at all so on the very bottom you guys can see we have two separate 2020 channels that make up the y-axis rail there with the belt right in the middle of them we've got a y-axis motor and stop switch here with a little roller on the end of it strain relieved wire from the bed very nice goes into the base we do have the manufacturing label here that shows us our printing volume which is 230 by 230 by 260 so very nice and our power supply apparently is 350 watts so yeah so flipping back around to the front we can see the front of the hot end and extruder assembly we've got this little arm here that we can pull here to you know release the, the gear that pushes on it and this is where our filament will feed in from the top here down. So all of our extruder parts, including the motor, is inside there. You guys can see we got a nice little logo in the front. Here we have some venting and we can see the heat break in there and it looks like the V6 style heat break. Going on this side, we can see there's more openings and there's actually a fan there. And that appears to be the parts cooling fan. And then there looks like another fan behind that that cools the heat break behind here. So yeah, very interesting design. I'm still wondering what kind of leveling this thing uses because if we look over here, we can see we got a little nub here that sticks out and it goes into a sensor here and this is the z-axis i guess optical kind of sensor there but yeah back here for the x-axis we can see the belt here adjusts by this tensioning mechanism here and you can tighten it or loosen it to you know adjust the belt so that's nice going to the other end we can see we've got the x-axis and stop switch here also on a roller very nice so everything is completely enclosed in this junction box. We got the x-axis motor here, and this is where we plugged everything in. So going down from there, you guys can see how the channels are connected. So we got one bolt on the bottom, and then we got two little bolts here on the side that hold the whole thing. And it does seem to be pretty sturdy overall. It does have a little bit of flex, but mostly feels pretty good. And this is where our main cable comes out here. All right, so going here to the front on the bed, we can see we got a nice little logo. So here's our belt and our tensioner for the belt to adjust the tension. Now over here, we got a pretty large opening or hole, I guess. And this is actually for storage. And this cover that we saw earlier actually goes here. And it looks like it just clips in there just like that. Look at that. So yeah, you have a little storage here for tools and whatnot else. Well, that's pretty nice to see that they took advantage of that space. We do have some SD card storage. So if we grab the SD that came with it, we can kind of put it in there so you guys can see a little better how that works. So yeah, it's just extra card storage here on the side, very cool. So going down here to the front, we got a nice logo, Magician X. Here we have the ports, got a USB port, 
the full size SD card port and also it looks like a USB type C port which is interesting and here to the left side we got the screen which is a pretty decent size not large but you know pretty good and on the left side of the printer it's pretty clean not much here and same thing for the right side except here at the back we got the on and off switch that's fused with the power input so yeah guys that's pretty much the whole printer here and it does look pretty unique for sure very curious of how the out of bed leveling part works because apparently that's what it has all right, so I got the power plugged in. Let's go ahead and hit the power button. Okay, so I saw something flash there. Okay, it's loading up. And there it goes. So yeah, pretty quick load up there. Very cool. And you guys can see maybe here our UI. It does look pretty unique and pretty clean, actually. I do like the dark background. So it looks like we have some hot buttons there. Preheat and menu and then print and leveling. I guess we'll click on leveling. Okay, so it says here that it needs to heat up before it can initialize the leveling. So we're gonna let it do its thing. But yeah, if it's as simple as pushing that one button and that's pretty easy actually, they seem to figure that part out. Well, let's see what happens here next. And we can see here on the screen that our bed is starting to warm up and also our hot end there. It's going to 150 on the hot end and 50 on the bed. All right, so it's moving around. Okay, so the X works, the Y works, and now the Z going down. All right. So let's see how this actually works. Okay, so it's actually hitting the bed, so it must have a strain sensor inside. So if you guys can see, maybe I'm not sure, but it actually does push against the bed. And that's how it takes measurements. Very cool. So the last printer that I remember having this was a Creality printers. I haven't seen it on any other printers yet, but this is the first one. So pretty cool to see them implemented because this does seem to work very well, at least on the other printers that I've tested and it eliminates the whole manual bed leveling altogether. As long as you know, it's manufactured correctly and the bed is somewhat straight from the factory. So. All right, so it looks like it's finished. Now I'm kind of curious, you know, if we can set the offset up or down, you know, as we need it or not, but let's click on menu here. Okay, so in the menu we do have Z axis offset and we can go up and down from there. So yeah, I guess we will adjust that if needed. But yeah, we have move, so you move all the axes. We got home, so if we click that, click on home and you can do individual homes, it should home itself which I already did just goes back to where it was and then we got the extruder controls where we can control the extruder percentages okay so this is the speed and everything then we got settings we got language the beeping sound so you can't turn that off I'm gonna leave it on it looks like it also has a filament detector inside here so you can't turn it on and off and we got info about the printer fan controls and then our Z axis offset so yeah Pretty simple guys. So let's go ahead and hit on this preheat here. Okay, so we just gotta click this whole section here. So these are actually sections that you click on. So you got PLA, ABS, and TPU. And yeah, that's another cool thing about this printer. Since it is direct drive, we should be able to print TPU and we will be trying that out. All right, so as it's preheating, it looks like it's set to 210 and 75 on the bed. A little hot, but they actually wanna be hot for these kind of beds because they stick good in the beginning. All right, so let's go back here. Now, before we do anything, we need to go ahead and put some filament in. And I'm gonna go ahead and skip this coil that it came with because I don't really like to use these. They're a little annoying and I'm gonna go ahead and grab a kilogram here of gray PLA. And we're going to set it here on the spool holder on the top. And then we're going to feed it down into the extruder here, into this hole. So yeah, pretty simple. We need to release this bolt here so we can kind of move the knob. You just push it out of the way like this, spring-loaded, and then you push down the filament. So because it's preheated, well, let's see, maybe we need to bring this up a bit. But yeah, it should be preheated so we can just manually push it down. And you guys can see it's starting to purge. Now you can tighten this bolt a bit so it pushes force on it. But yeah, you can go into the menu here and use the extruder and click on load and let's set it to 10 millimeters and that's gonna push it down, you guys can see on its own, so. All right, so we've got some gray coming out, perfect. So we are good to go there. So we are preheated, the bed is hot, the nozzle's hot. The last thing left to do is grab this SD card that it came with and we're gonna insert it here. Let's see, does it go upside down or right side up? Let's try right side up first. Nope, upside down. And it actually says here, car inserted. So we're gonna click on print down here. 
and it's going to ask us which port we want to use the sd card or the usb port so you can use either we've got the sd card in there and sure enough looks like they did include some g-codes so we have a deer monkey king and a vase so let's go ahead and go with the deer i guess since it's the first one so it looks like it's doing its thing here so let's see what it actually does get you guys a little closer there so what i can tell the offset seems to be perfect actually wow that's pretty impressive so they got this thing really figured out and it does seem to be laying down really flat this is a pretty large print looks like and yeah it's definitely auto leveling it because i can feel the motors in the back uh, turning a little bit as it keeps going through the bed so it is auto adjusting itself as it moves through the plane so so this print actually looks pretty large hopefully it's not something ridiculous but in any case let's go ahead and zoom out here a little bit and i'll bring in my microphone so you guys can hear it it's actually quite quiet overall We do have a little bit of fan sound coming mostly from the bottom. Believe it or not, mostly that power supply, these fans here are actually very quiet. And I don't know if the uh, parts cooling fan is on, probably not right now, but the, the other fan in there is very quiet. So yeah, if it wasn't for the power supply fan, it would be ultra quiet. Let's go ahead and real quickly look at the uh, screen here as we're printing and see what is available. So you guys can see we have a pause button. We got the progress bar here, which is still at zero. We got the X position, the Y position, and also the Z over here. Underneath the bar, we got temperature, which is only a 180 kind of interesting 60 on the bed time that passed since we started which is almost nine minutes so yeah so yeah we got a pause a stop and then we got adjustments for heating and then our percentages for the speed looks like and we do get the baby step adjustments which is very nice so you can adjust it up and down as you're printing if you need to very cool and also we have more so if we click more we have fan and extruder controls there so let's click on percentages here we can see we can adjust the speed or the flow rate how much flow we have on the nozzles and you just toggle that between the two so let's go back go to heat and change the nozzle and again we can toggle from hot bed to nozzle to at least 190 well, let's say 190 maybe so yeah very good controls i'm glad to see the baby step there too so all right so yeah we'll just be waiting on this print here and unfortunately this might take a while so i'm thinking that maybe we should abandon this print here so let's go ahead and print something else and the deer seem to be kind of ridiculous print in the first place so let's go with this monkey king at two and a half hours it says on there so maybe it may be a little bit more reasonable and this one's actually at 200 temperature so yeah okay on this print we seem to be way too close to the bed okay yeah that's much better so it is doing a raft All right, so the Monkey King here successfully printed out, which is good to see. And the bed has pretty much cooled off. So it took two hours and 54 minutes, 55 minutes basically. So confirm that. And yeah, our bed is 31 right now. So yeah, pretty much cooled off. So yeah, let's see how easy it pops off. Oh, look at that, that's awesome. Yeah, and that's the great thing about these beds is once they heat up, they grab really well. And when they cool off, it just pops right off. So let's take a closer look at this thing. Yeah, it looks a little rough to be honest. And there's a lot of layering and all kinds of weird stuff going on in here. So yeah, not very good start here, at least with this print here. I don't even know if it's worth messing with this thing. But for now, let's just go with what we got here. And you guys can see there's a lot of layering and inconsistency. So I'm not sure if that's with the extreme or the hot end or what's going on it seems like everything's fine or maybe it's also the slicing I don't know but it's definitely not great or anywhere near there kind of a disappointing here start but of course we didn't slice this print either and I don't know how it's been sliced and it did seem to print pretty quick for this type of print here so maybe a combination of all those things is not a good outcome here but yeah I'm gonna go ahead and check 
my belts this one does seem a little too tight here and just go over the printer and check make sure everything is looking good and also i don't think i want to print any more files that were included you know slice my own ones so let's go ahead and uh, jump to the computer all right guys so here we are at the computer and i got the sd card plugged in let's go ahead and see what's on it so yeah looks like they have quite a few things here we got the cure slicer for windows then we got some g codes here scattered around a bunch of pdfs let's open one here and see it says manual on all of them oh, okay so it's in different languages and here's our english and german so yeah they are mixed somewhat but yeah it's the same manual that we got there so yeah just got g codes manuals and it looks like also a cura profile here so let's go ahead and open up cura and see if we can't slice something here. Now, if you guys notice, they didn't include a Mac OS version, which is what I'm using. So looks like we're gonna have to improvise here a little bit. So in care, if you click over here, you can see you got your printers here. So we're gonna click on add printer, and then we're gonna click on add non-networking printer. And here we have a bunch of them to choose from. And Ming that is probably not known enough to be in here yet. We're gonna have to basically improvise here a little bit. Now, the interesting part is the technology that it's using with the pressure sensor leveling that he uses, we can actually probably go to Creality here and choose one of the printers that has the same things. I know the CR6SE has it, but also the 10S here, and I know this one works for sure, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with that one. So we're gonna add it, and then we're gonna modify the build volume here. So we're gonna put 230 by 230 by 260, I guess that's what that is. We should be good to roll, I think. So yeah, let's click on next. And here we go, now we have the build volume. And it's a nice clean layout here in Cura. So let's go ahead and drag a model in here. We'll zoom in a little bit. So the main thing here is our settings here on the side and we're gonna have to adjust a few things here and so I keep it really really simple guys for all my printers as far as the you know first initial prints go so we're gonna leave it at two layer height all this is fine the thing that helps a lot is the wall line count change that to three just makes the wall one more line thicker and then everything else is fine the way it is infill density probably change that to 15 so it's a little quicker temperature we're gonna leave it at this and so for the build plate we need at least 60 because of the uh, way it is. At 60 usually works really good. If you're having problems with sticking, you might wanna go a little higher or maybe even a little lower, 55, but usually a little higher works better, 65, even 70. Now, if you're not sticking at all and you know they're popping off, then most likely you have oil on the bed and you just need to clean it with water and soap and that works the best. So we're gonna leave the speed at 50. Everything here is fine, except for the initial layer, probably wanna slow that down to like 15 or something. So the first layer goes down nice. Retraction, yes, five millimeters should be fine, even though it could have less maybe, but we'll just leave it at five. Fan settings are all generic there. And then for the build plate adhesion, I like to use skirt and it's gonna go around three times. So I like this the best because it prints straight to the bed. So we're gonna get a nice clean bottom. Yeah, and that's basically it. And then we got spiralized mode here when we do print and spiralize. So we'll check that out obviously a little later. But yeah, simple as that, we're done here. So we got this cube here. So let's click on slice and this shouldn't be, <laughs> yeah, only 34 minutes to print. And now we can save it to our removable, which will go straight to our card here. So we're not gonna inject yet. Double click or right click and then clear build plate. And let's go ahead and bring a benchy in here. And we're gonna slice it exactly the same way as the cube. And that's only gonna take, let's say, what, two hours? Yep, pretty close, under two hours. We'll save that. And now we can go and print them out. Eject the card straight from here. So yeah, not very hard guys. And this should work just fine. All right, so we got the calibration cube and the benchy printed out and the 10S profile worked great on here and there was no issues. It just purged and then started printing. So yeah, it works out really nice. So let's go ahead and look at the cube here. Hopefully you guys can see that pretty good. So we got the X here. Uh, there's a little bit of vibration, not much ghosting. So maybe we do need to adjust those belts just a little bit more. It looks like they might be too tight, but yeah, overall looks really reasonable. Then we got the Y here. We can see there's a little bit more vibrations and that kind of makes sense. I guess the build plate is glass and it's a little heavier. And also I did have my GoPro connected to it. So that might have something a little bit to do with it. But yeah, vibrations, there's some, but practically no ghosting. So, so we got the X wall and then the Y wall. 
So yeah, we can definitely see a little bit more fine vibrations. And the top, very nice. So overall, I would say it did a really good job. There is a little bit of vibrations on the Y, but overall the layers are pretty consistent and definitely a huge stark difference between our first print there. So let's look at the bench. I haven't pulled it off yet. It should pop off easy. Let's see. Yeah, it's, it wasn't even like on there, which is so interesting because usually benches are known to, you know, pry up and peel off and pop off while they're printing. But yeah, this bed here grabs it really well and then cools off. Everything just comes right off. All right, so the Benchy is going to be, you know, a little bit more revealing here what's going on. So I did adjust the belt a little bit here, made it a little bit looser. And also this belt a little looser too before I printed the Benchy. Now one thing just looking at it right away is I think the temperature is a little bit higher because everything is more shiny looking than normal. At least it seems like that. But or the way it's put down, it seems like the hot end is a little hot. So maybe 200 is hotter than this printer likes with this hot end. But yeah, starting here from the bottom, obviously this looks great. Now the sides, you guys can see how nice the layers were put down, very uniform. And here on the front, but not perfect. We do have some ghosting right there, stitch here, and there's a little bit of layering, but very minor. Yeah, we can see on the walls, they actually look pretty decent. Very good cooling there, it looks like, and retractions. Overhang is pretty good here on the front. We can see our box there, it looks pretty good too. So yeah, I wouldn't say, you know, it's great, but it's definitely good. But it does seem to be a little bit more clumsy with the print itself than normally, so. And I'm not sure if that's, you know, the printer itself or some adjustments needed maybe more. I mean, the belts are not as tight anymore, so they should be fine there. And I went over the printer, checked everything. Everything runs smooth and pretty much perfect, so including the bed. So yeah, at this point, you know, we're relying on the electronics here. All of our physical, you know, movements seem to be ironed out. So now we're just depending on the rest of the system here. And this is what we're getting, which is pretty good. And maybe a thousand times better than this first print. And by the way, I try to clean this thing and it's... It's, it's a mess, basically. In any case, guys, at this point, I think we just need to print out more things and see how that goes. And I also want to do some spiralized printing, see how well we can do that. So I'm going to go ahead and slice a few more models, same way we sliced the Benchy and the Cube. And then we'll look at those, and I'll give you guys my opinion about the Magician X. All right, guys, so we printed out quite a few more things here. And overall, the printer did very well. So we've looked at the Benchy and the calibration cube, which turned out much better than our first print here. But in any case, I went ahead and printed a few other things. So let's start with this little frog. I really like printing this print because it's really small. And, and you guys can see it turned out very nice. We got very uniform layering and looks really good. And so this really shows that the printer is very capable. And under here, we can see that there's nothing weird going on. And it's a pretty steep angle here. So yeah, pretty good print. Also no stringing. Now there is a little bit of under extrusion here and there, but that's actually my own fault. And we're going to see that a few times here on some of the prints and pretty severe on one of them. And I'll show you exactly why that was happening and just not me paying attention. But in any case, yeah, the frog turned out really nice. For the next print, let's look at the rook here. And this is actually downscaled about 25% from the original. So it's smaller. And one of the reasons why it looks a little rougher, but the main reason why it looks pretty bad, especially right here. And below that, you guys can maybe tell there's quite a bit of under extrusion here and there. And this little lever arm here on the extruder that pushes down on the dual gear is really hard to release when it's tightened up. 
even a little so I have to like untighten it every time until it's almost out and then I can easily move the lever but the issue with that is that every time I start a print I forget to tighten this up so there was a couple prints like this one here that I forgot to and it, you can see how it starts under extruding and sometimes I don't tighten it enough maybe or something so yeah I guess that's one of those things that you know you just got to remember to do but even then we can see that our cooling is not great and that's going to show up on all the prints here but overall this print still made it and and there is a very complicated helix inside which also successfully printed but it is all a little bit melted so the next print we can look at is this octopus and the great thing about this it has a lot of little feet and all these little pieces they have to stick to the bed and then they meet together and so you know this shows more of how capable the bed is and sticking and it did pretty well except for this one leg here it broke off and kind of messed up but the rest of the legs did perfect now after I had this issue I did use the adjustment here in the menu to the Z offset and I did adjust that a tiny bit lower and that really fixed all my issues from there on so but yeah other than that guys the octopus looks really nice and the layers are sitting really good overall so about the normal here and pretty good print overall so so for the next print we can look at this bearing is what this is called so this is supposed to be a functional print where you can turn it kind of like a bearing but this printer was not able to I guess give us the clearance there to loosen up all these gears so it's welded shut so whenever it printed it, it melted together all the pieces so there's not going to move and I tried to put a wrench in here yeah there's no way this thing's breaking up we do have a little bit of accuracy issue here you know it could be in the feed rate it could be in the temperature or you know a combination of those things so at least for this printer here you know that would need to be fine-tuned so as you guys know I normally print the astronaut and the spaceship and this is what we have here so let's look at the astronaut real quick here looks pretty good overall there is a little bit of layering but it's pretty consistent and looks really decent for the most part and by the way I didn't mention but everything was printed in 0.2 layer height at 50 millimeters a second with 195 on the temperature and 60 on the bed so yeah and I did scale it down again about 25 percent so it's smaller than usual but we can see here underneath this is all the bed had to grab onto it's these little ridges and it did not pop off so the bed has been working excellent except for this one octopus issue after that there was no issues whatsoever as far as sticking which is quite impressive it actually works better than usual but if we look here under the arms we can see that we do have some cooling issues and so here we have the spaceship let me move these out of the way real quick. you guys can see a little better but i haven't took it off the bed yet i'm really curious if it's just going to slide off like it normally does after it cools so let's see i'm just going to push it okay it's still stuck on the bed okay so this is the first print okay no actually this leg is completely loose okay it's just mostly the back leg wow yeah very easy guys and you know as you know the spiralized mode is how the spaceship is printed these prints are pretty fragile so it's pretty amazing how easy it just pops off but yeah guys you can see this is actually the full height here of 260 so yeah not you know very tall here but you know a good size and because our whole assembly here goes quite low or I guess I should say quite thick in its height you know this part does need to be a little taller even though our print you know is not as tall in any case the spaceship looks really good here's the bottom perfect so here we can look at the walls we got very slight vibrations which is you know pretty normal so it is some stepper motor vibrations I guess overall the layers are sitting pretty uniform yeah but if we look at the G here it does look okay but it's pretty ghosty and ringy so yeah and also here you guys can really see there's a lot of ghosting there so yeah I wouldn't say you know this is great but it's definitely reasonable and then if we go up even more we can really see where we have cooling issues because we melted pretty early here on the top and there's no ball at all it melted that completely so it looks like there's not enough cooling and I would say that's probably the uh, bigger indication of this printer of not performing above normal and also guys for this last print here we have a benchy but this is not just an ordinary benchy this benchy is printed in TPU and it turned out beautiful so this printer does an excellent job with TPU which was very impressive and all I did is use the same file that we printed this benchy at and just slowed it down by 50 percent and this is what came out and it's beautiful actually I was very impressed of how well was able to put TPU down so it's a little harder to bend but in any case yep very nice and the layers bonded very well let's see maybe I can bend this thing in half there we go you guys can see it bounces right back so yeah TPU excellent
So I think overall the printer obviously did pretty well, but I do feel like it could have done better. Now with that said guys, this model here that I have is actually a pre-production model. And even though it's pretty much what it's going to be like, there still could be minor issues that are ironed out before it becomes available to everyone. So let's quickly go over some of the good things and not so good things about this printer. And so one of the best things is the direct drive dual gear extruder with the hot end assembly here. And not only that, it has a filament detector right inside. So that's built in. It has the pressure leveling on the nozzle, which does the automatic bed leveling. So I would say definitely the highlight of this printer is this whole assembly here. And it rides on this really thick rail, which is nice. But the thing that's maybe not so nice is all these plastic components around it. Our top is plastic. Our brackets here are plastic. And our whole bottom base is plastic and even our bed is plastic so a lot of plasticky stuff which you know is probably fine but i would have still preferred more metal type structures like aluminum obviously but you know this is a budget printer so there is some compromises with that we do get the dual z drives with the tethered belt great build volume of 230 by 230 by 260. the out of bed leveling seems to work very well at least on my model here the stepper drivers do seem to be pretty silent overall now when the machine does move pretty quick you can still hear but overall it's pretty quiet i do like all these ports up front especially the full size sd card very nice touch screen with a great ui very easy to use and very intuitive and also i love how it has the belt adjusting on the x and y so yeah guys overall i think this is a great printer for the right price and it does offer a pretty unique printing experience especially for the out of bed leveling which you know is probably the biggest deal of anybody getting started to print and just the ease of having something that just works you know the magician x here does that extremely well but with that said this printer is available at a very reasonable price as a campaign offering on Kickstarter. Now before you get too excited, know the risks that are involved in backing a Kickstarter campaign like this. It's not a guarantee that you will get what you back, so yeah. Make sure you read up on all that before you pull the trigger on these. But yeah, if you are interested and you want to take the risk, I'll have the link where you can get this thing. And also there'll be a link to Amazon where you can buy this thing when they are available. And also guys, I did want to address a concern that some of the viewers have, which they say that my reviews are very biased and that I get paid for these reviews, which are not true. I've never been paid for any of the printers that are reviewed on this channel. Now I do get printers sent in for review, but as you guys know, I take a lot of time and energy to make videos so they don't really pay themselves off. And where I live, I can't even sell these things. So they end up just going into storage at this point. So I hope this clears up a little bit from my end of what I do and how I do it. I like to give every printer a fair chance because there's so many components to them and the quality control at the factories where they build them is not perfect. So, you know, I could have a bad printer, but when you buy one, you can have a great printer or it could be the other way around. It's just one of those things that you have to understand that these kind of machines are pretty complicated in their own nature. And sometimes they work great, but other times you could have, you know, quite a bit of trouble with exactly the same printer so anyways guys i hope you enjoyed this video if you did then hit that like button if you enjoy videos like this stay tuned for more i got something pretty interesting coming up in my next 3d printing video and also check out my pretty long playlist of other printers i've reviewed so as always guys thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the next one peace